Hey, welcome back to this Thirsty Thursday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco, coming here as we do every day from the Newsmax headquarters in Midtown, from the Question Tequila Studios. And uh, as we breeze through our second hour, all the talk on the Democratic debate stage is about health care, health care, health care. And uh, to break it all down for us, a uh, good old-fashioned conservative, the founder of Juniper Research, Chris Jacobs, joins us today as a senior health care expert. And he's the author of the book, The Case Against Single Pay. Chris, thanks for uh, joining us today. The big news is, you know, everybody's, you know, every, everybody wants to give everybody everything for free, right. including health care. Um, give us the case against single pay. I, th- I think the problem with, with giving every, everyone everything for free, have you ever been to an all-you-can-eat buffet? I have. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, As you what, might what, notice. What, what, <laughs> not trying to get at you. Uh, when when, when health care is free... People are going to overconsume it. There aren't going to be enough doctors and nurses and hospitals to take care of everybody. <laughs> On top of the fact that your taxes are going to go up and people and and people are going to get laid off in the in the medical sector. I mean, I feel like when I go to an all-you-can-eat buffet, I don't really eat more. I have like a bigger selection, but it's not like I'm. I, it's I a don't marathon. Not have a the possibility to consume anymore. I'm I'm full at a certain point. You know what I mean? So, can the is there a saturation point where, okay, we're not going to get overwhelmed if everybody gets it for free? I think you will have more people can consume more health care. Obviously, nobody's going to volunteer for a heart bypass because it's free. But there are multiple experts have said it's not only a case where you're going to increase the demand for health care. There's not going to be enough supply to meet it. Ah, I see. So uh, Bernie Sanders was one of the first candidates uh, in the major parties to talk about this and make this a big issue of his. And four years ago when he was running, it was so fringe, it was so unorthodox, very few people took it seriously. This time around, many different candidates have their own version of a single-payer health care plan. Here's Bernie Sanders talking about his Medicare for All plan. The idea of a Medicare for All, the idea that the United States of America should join every other major country on earth in guaranteeing health care to every man, woman, and child. This is not a radical idea. In fact, poll after poll shows that a majority of the American people support that idea. So um, how is that possible, uh, that every other Western democracy has a universal single-payer health care plan? Why are we the odd man out? Well, it's, it's not possible for, for a variety of reasons. First of all, it's not Medicare for all. It's Medicare for none. As I explain in the book, the, the Bernie Sanders' own legislation actually abolishes the current Medicare program. And it abolishes the current Medicare program to create a new health care system um, that will, co- in theory, cover seniors and, and cover everyone else. So it's not Medicare for all. Second of all, it doesn't guarantee health care as a human right. It guarantees that you will get your treatment paid for if you can find a doctor or a hospital to take care of you. And that's a big if. Now, one question that I have to ask is there are 44 million people in this country without health insurance. That doesn't even include people that aren't happy with their insurance or aren't happy with the level of control that their insurance company has over them. The reality is these 44 million people often avoid going to the doctor until it's too late. If they do need some sort of a serious operation or have a serious illness, that often results in bankruptcy or a lifetime of medical bills. What do we do about those folks, the people that are uninsured and are uh, one sickness away from bankruptcy or put off going to the doctor until it's really too late? Yeah, I think we need to get the incentives right in healthcare. You, you all know this because you're economists, you work in, in the markets. People are very good at spending everybody else's money. And that's some of the problem with health care. Now, you're not going to sh- be a s- smart consumer of health care when you're in the hospital, you're having a heart attack, you're in the ambulance on the way to the emergency room. I, I get that. But you can shop more effectively for health, for health services, for MRIs, X-rays, prescription drugs, things like that. We need to get the incentives right because right now everybody is doing a great job of spending everyone else's money. And, um, you know, the, there was this talk of, like, rationing, like, if there goes to single payer. So let's just say it goes to single payer, and I'm over here um, smoking this cigar on television yeah. that, you know, our previous guest brought down, uh, Michael McHale. Um, 
where they say, well, John, we're not going to treat you because we know you're not taking care of yourself. You, you, you're smoking cigars. We got other people who don't smoke cigars here. Yeah, we're going to take care of them first. Yeah, and I, I think you see that. And, it, and it's not so much about smoking cigars or no, whether or not you're smoking cigars. You but, but really, it's a question of how much does a treatment cost? If the treatment is too expensive, they're not going to pay for it. And in many cases, it, it represents what the treatment is, the treatment more expensive, and what will it do for the average. There might be an expensive treatment that wouldn't work well on somebody like you and I, but there may be an expensive treatment that would work great on an African-American female, but because it doesn't work for the average person, government bureaucrats aren't going to cover it. So what would be the problem in theory, uh, Chris? Because we heard the same arguments that we hear against single payer, against Medicare at the time it was proposed, and we heard many of the same arguments, uh, expense, rationing against Obamacare. What would be the problem with giving everybody universal, taxpayer-funded health insurance for the most basic operations, and then if they need something a little bit more high-end, like a John Tobacco, he's got to get his own Cadillac health care plan in the private sector? Well, I think, first of all, we've got $22 trillion in debt as, as a nation. And so we have to have a sustainable safety net. And that's something I talk about in the book. If we don't prioritize to those who can least afford it, we won't have enough money for everybody. We don't need to be providing subsidized health coverage for, for Bill Gates or Warren Buffett or, or, or Elon Musk or anybody else like that. We need to have a targeted safety net and make sure that those who are most vulnerable get the resources they need. It's uh, great to have someone on who can put a perspective on it that people can understand. Um, we always try to bring, you know, real guests on, you know, not, you know, on some of these other channels. They got these talking heads that they just get paid to go on TV. Um, you put this stuff into practice. Um, your book is out there, The Case Against Single Payer. Um, you said you brought a copy that you were going to autograph absolutely. for Joe Piscopo. And, and for you. <laughs> and for Frank. Oh, no, absolutely. I'm I can't more. compete with cigars and tequila, but, you know, I'll do my best. That's right. And uh, But look, hey... Uh, it's just as important to uh, read great books like The Case Against Single Payer as it is to um, smoke cigars and s support our sponsor, Question You Own Tequila. But I want to thank you very much for joining us. You come on down to Liquid Lunch anytime, and next time, bring cigars. You stay right there. <laughs> Kate Herman coming up after this. First, Mike Tracy talking about the breaking news on James Comey. Liquid Lunch Live is brought to you by Panzoni Vodka.